Hey guys, welcome back. It's Josh with the Financial Advisor Car Guy. And guess what? You're seeing this car again a lot sooner than I intended. So uh, the reason that we're doing another episode on the Eclipse is because I had to pull out, you see back seats over here. We're gonna walk back around over here and you're gonna see carpet, floor mats, brand new seats. All this stuff had to come out of the car. There's a bunch of interior pieces and there is a stripped out interior. So why? All right, let's talk about it. If you guys remember, right before my daughter and I put in her new racing buckets, I had her steam clean the carpet and she did a pretty good job. The carpet came a lot cleaner, but it was a little bit damp to the touch. And quite frankly, I was rushed. I wanted to get the seats in. I wanted to get the car put away. We had a storm coming. It was gonna rain, snow, all the things. And I really just needed the car to be done. So um, I gave my daughter a heat gun, which I'm looking for. I have it somewhere sitting around here. And she basically sat in the back seat with the heat gun and just cooked the carpet and basically tried to get it to dry out. So whatever, we put the car away. Um, a couple days later, I notice some condensation building up inside the glass, both the front window and the back window. And so, you know, I mean, there was like moisture condensation all in there. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I talked to my wife about it and I'm like, listen, I, I'm going to have to pull the car into the garage, prop the doors open, air this thing out and just let it dry. Because clearly there's moisture inside the car. That's why there's condensation. Um, you know, the long and short of it was I was spot on. Pulled the car into the garage, popped the hood, disconnected the battery, opened the doors, opened the hatch, let it air dry. It wasn't working. <laughs> so I got a little space heater, closed the doors, closed the hatch, put the space heater inside on 90 and the carpet dried out. It was great. So after like, I don't know, I was checking on it pretty regularly and I didn't keep the heater on through the night. So, I mean, maybe it was on for 12 or 14 hours, something like that. I started it one morning and then did it the next or put it away like that night and then checked on it the next morning. And the next morning, some of the moisture came up through the carpet again. So very quickly, I realized water had crept below the carpet and it was actually trapped in uh, you can sort of see it, but there's like a foam pad, right? Just like your house carpet, just like any carpet, there's generally a foam pad underneath. Well, it had accumulated and soaked up tons of water. So I'm thinking back to when my daughter had cleaned the carpet. We have a, we have a carpet cleaner, it's a steam cleaner. It works great on rugs. It works great on spots and couches and all those things. Well, she used it in the car. My only guess is that when she was you know, using the suction device, it wasn't taking, it wasn't sucking deep enough from the water. I think the water, she was getting the water off the surface of the carpet, but I don't think she was actually getting the water that had seeped down below. So what I ended up doing was propping the carpet up and I'll, I'll take you back over here so we can take a look. But you'll see here in the carpet, there's some cuts and holes and slices and this is basically where the harnesses come up. There's some on that side too, but like for the power seats and all the things. Well, this car doesn't have power anything. No power windows, no power seats, none of that. So the only wire that came up through these slits in the carpet were for the seatbelt chime, you know, the chiming warning and whatever else. And so basically with the seats out, the carpet was still in the car. I took um, a couple of screwdrivers and stood them up under the carpet, propping up the carpet, right? If you can imagine the floor of the car, the carpet rests on there. Well, I propped the carpet up and stuck a screwdriver kind of vertically in two spots on the driver's side and on the passenger side. And then I physically sat here with my heat gun blowing hot air underneath the carpet. After doing that for a while, I gave up. <laughs> it was working, things were drying out. I decided, you know what, it's just easier to take the carpet out. So I Googled it and did find a YouTube video. I'm going to do another follow-up video once this carpet goes back in. Also, the back seat is going to go back in. 
So when I do that, I will do a follow-up video with a how-to because there are people out there that have been looking. When I was looking, like I said, I did find a video, but um, it was fine. I had to watch a whole hour-long video to get to like a literally two-second, <laughs> two-minute section on how to take the carpet out. So I will do another video on that um, at another time. But realistically, it goes in the same way it came out. It's very simple. The back seat is two bolts and a lever, two levers, and then the carpet's like seven screws. So very simple. I will do a follow up on that. Um, but okay, so here's the other thing of it too, is while I've had this stuff out and drying and it is dry, it's all ready to go back together. If you remember when she shampooed the carpet and shampooed the back seats, I had made the mention of, you know, she, she ultimately would love, see there's the seats over there she would love black interior to match the front seats. So I did some research and I found that there's a couple of kits that you can buy that dye the upholstery, right? It'll, it'll dye, oops, it'll dye the fabric on the seats and it can also dye the carpet. So there's my heat gun <laughs> and the center console and a towel and Windex and everything when she was cleaning up the floor in there. But anyway, um, I ordered some Duplicolor rattle can dye. And just like everything else, I go to YouTube, I research it, I see what people think, what people do. And um, a lot of people use either RIT dye, which is like for clothing and whatnot, or Duplicolor has dye in a rattle can. And it's, it's kind of like paint, you spray paint it on and then I watched a tutorial and a gentleman basically used um, a brush and just sort of like using a circular motion, just sort of brushed the dye, the paint into the fabric and then used Dawn dish soap to wipe away any residual residue. And he literally sat on it immediately following it's, it was dry. He sat on it and it didn't leave any, any marks or anything on his clothes. Um, we're gonna give it a shot. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is while everything is out, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to, we're going to have this dye here any, any day. Um, I'm going to paint the back seats and I'm going to paint the carpet and they'll be black. So I'm not worried about water spots or anything in the carpet that may be stained. Um, I might try to use soap and clean them before applying the dye, but I think that's going to be a pretty great solution. And then just bolt it all back together. Now, as you can see down here on the ground, We've got some of the interior trim. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just paint everything black. Now that it's all out, um, there's no reason not to. You know, we've kind of converted part of the interior. It's a very two-tone beige and black. Um, you know, the headliner's still beige, the, the A pillars, the, well, B pillars, but the rear pillars are also beige. Um, you know, the side panels and the back seat are all beige. There's still quite a bit of beige inside the car, but I definitely think that if we were to take some of the smaller trim pieces and paint them black, and then of course the back seats and the carpet and paint those black as well, I think we're in great shape. I think the interior is gonna look really nice, really clean. It's gonna look new, having fresh dye on these seats and the front new buckets that are brand new back over there. Um, I'm really excited actually. I really think the interior is gonna look great. And then all the while I have kept the battery off the, you know, I'm unhooked. So it's just sitting here. It's not, there's no power to it. So I can leave these doors open if I need to um, just prop them open, walk away for a day or more. And I don't have to worry about coming out here to a dead battery. That's it. You guys, this, <laughs> I really thought we had been done with this car for a little while. Um, but no, no, it's, it's the project that keeps coming back to haunt me. So once this is done, you know, like I said, we still have to tint the back window. Um, but while I was shopping for the paint or the dye, I did go ahead and buy new carbon fiber wrap. So if you remember last episode, I showed you guys how it was cracked and chipped and peeling and whatnot. So I'm just gonna go ahead and peel the rest of, or I'm gonna peel the carbon fiber finish off the hood. There's some bird poop, gross but I'm gonna peel this off and then give it a new rewrap. And then I'm probably gonna do the same with the spoiler. 
this is kind of, I mean, it doesn't look terribly matte finished, but it's more of a matte finished carbon. It's not a, um, like spinning around here. It's not a high gloss. Now this is real carbon fiber, but there are wraps that look much more um, high gloss. And so that's actually what I purchased. I purchased a very high gloss carbon instead of this kind of matte dry carbon, I think is what the difference is. And then on the wing, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna peel off this wrap that's on there and redo it as well. So those will both be uh, new and fresh looking and hopefully it's a thinner material so it should heat and expand and stick better than this stuff. I'm hoping to not have air bubbles and I'm hoping it doesn't lift in time. We'll see. Uh, my buddy Jake who wrapped this for me did say this material was pretty heavy duty and it's really hard to manipulate and make fold and bend and not even that, but just stay to the contours, even with heat. So I'm hopeful that the new product works better. Well, that's all I got for you guys this week. What do you think? Where would you do this differently? What would you change? What might you modify? Um, if we're taking the opportunity to redo the interior, is there anything else I should do? I'm gonna check some wiring. I'm gonna double check my um, radio. There was some extra wires and things that were in the dash, um, kind of behind the radio. I'm gonna kind of investigate all that stuff. I'm gonna rerun the wires to the sub and the amp in the trunk because they were all running under the carpet. This is just a fresh start in a lot of ways. So I'm really looking forward to it, but I'm also really excited to what the black carpet and back seats have to offer. So again, comment down below. Let me know what you'd do different or what you would change or what you think I should do while everything's open and exposed. But don't forget to subscribe, like this stuff, share it, and most importantly, remember, may every investment you make be a good one. Till next time.